and come in and help me. All right. I know it. I saw him do it. Why did he beat you? Because <laughs> I cut my hand on the side. Oh, you poor boy. <laughs> he said I did it on purpose. They got a word. Chris, I know you wouldn't do it. <laughs> well, listen, he's gone. I shall make fun of the house. I'll fix you. Chris, come on, don't cry anymore. I'm all done now. Chris, put your hand in the water and get the dirt off. Have you got any clean cloths? Yeah, I think so, in the second drawer. This will do. So he just wouldn't beat me. Just because he took me out of an orphanage, he ain't got no call to beat me. I hate him. Of course. Everybody does. What are you going to do? I could run away. You know better than that. You're Corson's bound boy. You're supposed to work for him until you're 21 years old. But if I run away, then I wouldn't have to work for him. Well, you'd only have the law on you and bring you back, and then things would be worse than ever. Maybe so. There just ain't no sense in living. We ain't got a chance. Why, Chris, what a thing to say. We've all got a chance. The world's full of beautiful things. Not for us swampers. Yes, sir. For all of us. Anyway, I'm not going to be a swamper. I'm not always going to be. I'm going to be somebody. Of course. You've been to school. Reckon you're about the smartest body in the Limberloa. Oh, Chris, you could go to school. I asked him once. He nearly killed me, though. Very well, then. I'll teach you how to read a book Mr. Nathan gave me. Will you, Lori? Sure. This is such a pleasure. Want to see the parlor? Sure. Mm -hmm. New curtains, huh? Mm-hmm. It's a nice parlor. But I'm going to have a better one. She was his wife, wasn't she? Mm-hmm. She's pitched head first into the wash tub and died. Oh, poor thing. You know what I... Who'd marry him? He's meaner than poison. Anybody would marry him would have to be mean, too. Then I'd have the two of them after me all the time. Chris, you couldn't stand that. It'd be... Laurie! Laurie! I have to go. I'm coming! I'm coming. Where have you been? Get him now. Get to washing. Took you a long time to feed that slut. I was watching the baby pigs. You can think of more ways to get out of work. Leave it to me to do. What good will I do you when Carson comes around for his money on the mortgage? We ain't got it. I'll lose my cabin, that's what. 
A lot you care about that. I care about me. I've been keeping you and feeding you ever since your mother died. You hate me for that. I couldn't help it if Mother died. She couldn't help it either. She could have. She'd have been alive today if she hadn't got notions like you're getting. Chasing butterflies and reading books. And I love her for that. I know her, won't you tell me more about her? I'll tell you this much. If she hadn't thought she's too good for the swamp, she wouldn't have come to no bad end. I don't believe you. And I won't let you talk about Mother like that. It's true. And you'll end up just the same way. Now quit your dreaming and get in your head you're nothing but an ugly, despised swamp girl. I won't listen to you. I won't listen. attempts to prove this man guilty of murder in the first degree, the penalty for which is death. The court will charge that you must be convinced beyond reason. It is my opinion that no reasonable man can dare to judge my client guilty of this terrible crime charge. Oh, no, I'm not crazy. I'm just practicing. Practicing being crazy? practicing at law. I'm just out of law school, and I was just holding an imaginary case. <laughs> Did you? For the judge to decide. Oh, what a lovely judge. What a lovely spectator. Oh, please don't go. What's your name? Lori. Oh, what's your last name? Mears. Lori Mears. What a pretty name. How's it that anything is as lovely as you found its way into the swamp? I live here. Oh, it's impossible. Why not? Well, I thought, I always believed that people that lived in swamps looked swampy. <laughs> Don't you think so now? After meeting you? You killed him? Of course. And you're trying to save a murderer? What is it, murder to kill doves? Why, of course. They can't fight back to protect themselves. A shame. Those poor little feet. Lovely bright feathers. I'm sorry. They've always seemed just about human to me. They understand everything I say to them. I do. If I show you, will you promise not to kill anymore? Look, you come with me. Come here. You just have to be quiet at first. This is Bushy. <laughs> That's Anna. And this is Jim. <laughs> Shake hands, Jim. Huh. Shake hands. That's the boy. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> you know, a long, long time ago, there was a man named St. Francis who had your power over wild folk. I've got a book about him. Must be a wonderful book. I'll bring it to you if you'd like to read it. Do you come here often? Every day. Beautiful. So quiet and secluded. It's my treasure trove. May I show you something? Mm-hmm. Butterflies, how nice. No, they're not butterflies, they're moths. Well, did you catch these? Yes. Well, I don't figure. After all that talk about my killing those birds? You mustn't eat them, Anna. <laughs> well, I'll have to explain. Moths and butterflies only last one day, and you have to keep their beauty. 
Well, I guess if you say so, it's all right. I must go now. But you haven't told me I might come back again. I've got to if I'm going to bring you that book. Oh, yes. So I come tomorrow? I'm Wayne Sellers. Uh, how do you do? <laughs> how do you do, Miss Smith? Yes, come tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye. Till tomorrow? Did you like him, Anna? <clears throat> oh, can I help you? Oh, I seem to be hopelessly entangled here. Thank you. <laughs> Gracious me. Now, duck. Oh. <laughs> oh, you certainly are very good. Are you all right? Yes, I'm splendid now. <laughs> My goodness. Oh, a dear. That's Anna. You can pet her. Oh. That's Michael. Michael. There's Bushy. Bushy. Oh, oh, oh Bushy, darling. Oh, what is this? Fairyland? I think so. What? And these animals, are they trained? No, they just grew up with me. Well, you remarkable child. And you're so pretty. Oh, thank you. What is your name, dear? Laurie. How well that suits you, Laurie. Uh, I'm Mrs. Parker. And I live in Plainville, and I write books about butterflies. You do? Mm -hmm. May I show you mine? Oh, yes, indeed. <clears throat> oh. Why, you have a whole collection. Do you catch these for sale? No. Well, you should. They're very, very valuable. If you ever do decide to dispose of them, will you bring them to me? Oh, yes. I don't know what this one is. Oh, that? Well, that's a catacola grot. I tried the whole afternoon to catch one of these. Oh, <laughs> let me give it to you. Oh, no, dear. I, I, I would, uh, I'd rather buy it from you. Would you mind accepting a dollar for it? Oh. Please, it would make me very happy. All right. <laughs> I'll put them away. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, dear. And now you'll be my guide as far as the road so that I can find my way back here sometime. Why, yes. So much. Oh, I certainly am torn to pieces. Oh. oh, is this yours? Mm hmm. Would you like to go for a little ride? Why, oh, I'd better not. Oh, did you ever ride in one before? No. You'd like it, did you? Mm-hmm. Sit over there. Oh, this is elegant! <laughs> Don't go too fast. Would you be frightened? No. It'll make the ride last longer. <laughs> oh, you funny little thing. <laughs> Get out of there! 
You hear me? Get out of there. Please, Aunt Nora, please. Shut up. It wasn't her fault. It was my fault. She was my guide in the swamp. Oh, I was hopelessly lost, I'm afraid. You must have been. To come down into these parts. Well, I'm very grateful, dear. Do you ever get to town? Oh, yes. I was there last Christmas. Perhaps you'll both come in and have tea with me and look over my butterfly collection. I live in the White House with the green shutters, just across the street from Judge Sellers. We don't get to town. Well, uh, I'll come and get you uh, and bring you home, too. I don't want this young and riding in contraptions like that. Or looking at butterflies and books. She's got enough high fluke notions in her head now to make her good for nothing. Well, I'll see you again, my dear. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Keep happy, dear. You've been meeting her before this, ain't you? No. Don't lie to me. I told you to keep away from them city folks, or you'll come to no good end. I'm not ugly. She said I was pretty. Psst. I'm Nora. You can't spoil a thing. Don't laugh at me. I never raised a hand to you, Laurie. But I'm warning you not to mix with them Plainville folks and get notions. She gave me a dollar for a butterfly. Oh, she did. Go buy soap and get to the washing. All right. Two more crackers and you'll owe me 30 cents, Abner. What's the matter, Jonas? You got your stump? No, I ain't stumped. I can move. But I'm trying to figure out my next move. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd move faster than that if you were asked to have a drink. <laughs> You best get out and do a little work raising crops instead of sitting around here raising nothing but calluses. Your mortgage is coming due. Ain't gonna be so easy on you this time. You need it. Checkers. Where's that feed you were to send up to my place, Nate? Now, Jeff, don't beller at me like a bull. You ain't holding no mortgage of mine, you know. Don't you talk to me like that. I'll take my business out of your dang store. Well, take it out if you want it. But don't point your finger at me. It upsets me terrible. Get me another bowl of that calico. None of that cheap stuff you sold me the last time. Jake Corson, buying another bowl of calico for curtains. He's had his house fixed up. New wallpaper and all. He's looking round again. Mm, I'd hate to be the woman he gets. Worked the last one into her grave. Oh, and she was such a sweet soul. I hope he don't start throwing sheep's eyes my way. Come on in. I want two bars of washing soap, Mr. Two Hayes. bars of washing soap. Well, I ain't seen you lately, Lori. Where have you been? Home. Have a stick of candy. Thank you. Better come up and see my house. Got it all fixed up. New curtains. Goodbye, Lori.
here, darling. Take some of these. Why, Mr. Nathan? <laughs> Looks to me like he's making up to you, Laura. I wouldn't put it past him. You go on in and talk to Sarah. She's in there dropping and purling. <laughs> Mrs. Nathan, may I come in? Well, Laurie. How be you, Laurie? Fine, thanks, Miss Sparks. Oh, I see you're busy as usual. Yes, we have a lot of washing to do. Mrs. Nathan, could I borrow some of your salve? Chris has cut his hand. Of course you can. A hunk of salt pork could do a sight more good. Oh, salve's much better, Libby. What are you making? I'm trying my best to knit a petticoat, Laurie. Low down, drunken bully. If he ever points his finger at me again, I'll break it off. <laughs> Tell Chris to keep his hand clean and smear this on thick. Thanks very much. I will. Goodbye. Oh, won't you set a spell, Laurie? Oh, I'd love to. But Nora's waiting. I have to go. Goodbye, Laurie. It's so good. Poor little Lori. Trying her dangest to make something out of herself and getting nowhere. Mind when she used to wash and scrub till midnight so she could go to school next day. Mm, and that woman nagging at her constantly. Looks as if Nori might forgive her hate for the child after all these years. Maybe she can't get over the fact that Laurie's mother married the man she wanted for herself, and she never will. I wish there was something we could do to give Laurie a little fun somehow. Hey, you're going to that bazaar, aren't you, Saturday? Yes. What's the matter with taking Laurie with you? Nora would never let her go, Pa. Nora's four months behind in her grocery bill to me, so I'll take care of her. Pa, you're smart. <laughs> you just commencing to find that out, Ma? <laughs> You stay where you are. We don't want any more argument with Nora. I'll be right out. Oh, please, Aunt Nora, come and thank him. Thank him for what? For refusing me credit if I don't let you go? Or for giving you clothes so you can go again me? Oh, don't you hope I have a good time? No. I hope them Plainville folks will make fun of you and learn your lesson. I don't think I'm afraid of them. Goodbye. My little guide from the swamp. Yes. <laughs> How is your aunt? Oh, Aunt Nora? That old Oh, she's that. just fine. Um, this is Mrs. Nathan. I call her my Aunt Sarah. How do you do, Ms. Nathan? How do you do? All right, friends, gather right in. And I want you to festoon your gazing optics upon those luscious, red, rosy lips of this kissing booth, the greatest booth on the midway. And the price to sip the nectar of romance from those beautiful little lips is only 10 cents. Wayne, would you care to indulge in this romantic pastime? No, why not? <laughs> All right, the pot of your money right there in the box, young man. All right, young man, go right ahead. Step in closely, friends. Gather right in, you gentlemen. Gather right in here. Now, there you are, my friend, to show you how simple it is. Just cheek to cheek, nose to nose, flippity-flop, and away she goes. Why, 
anybody can do it. Step right up, folks. The price is 10 cents. Step right up, folks. Step right up here. Anyone can indulge in this pastime. Come on, gentlemen. Step right up. Laurie. You. How are you? I brought the book, but I couldn't find you. I went to the Glade, and you weren't there. Lemonade? Yes. Two lemonades. Sarah, where did he ever meet a freak like that? What's she got on her feet? <laughs> What's she got on her head? <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Nothing. Want that? Oh, I don't dance. Oh, of course you do. Come on. Arnie. Come on. May I leave my hat here? Come on. Yeah, this dance with me. Well, come on, I'll substitute. Oh, ain't that great? <laughs> Let's take it. Well, now I, uh, Sarah. Oh, I... come on, Pa. You're still young. Well, who said there wasn't? <laughs> What in the world is Wade doing with that swamper? Is he crazy? Far from it. I think he's showing remarkable intelligence. She's one of the most delightful little persons I've ever known. Ah. You know, you're getting very old and hypocritical and sort of slipping into your dotage. What? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I, I think you'd ask me to dance. Would you honor me? Charm. <laughs> well, what is it? What's the matter? Can't you see? I don't dance. Well, what do you mean you're doing fine? But all those people are looking at me. Well, of course they are. You're the prettiest girl here. <laughs> don't you see? They're laughing at me. Who is? I'll take care of them. Please don't. Don't. Are you having a good time, Laurie? Yes. You are not. Come on. Save the next two for me, Laurie, because I'll be ready to quit in a minute. <laughs> Come on. I'll try again. Are you all right, darling? Oh, you're just mad. <laughs> well, I don't blame you at all. Say, I'll tell you, darling. Come on over to my house for a little while. You've never seen my butterflies in my workshop. Hmm? Would you excuse us if we go? Come along, chicken biddy. Nice lady, Pa. Yeah, she's all right. I'll let you and me go and finish the dance and see if anybody tries to trip you. <laughs> Are you trying to make trouble? Well, he tripped her, Daddy. Deliberately tripped her. What are you dancing with a fright like that for? She's Daddy? not a fright. She's a fine girl. I am girl. It's on Swamper. You disgrace me. You disgrace yourself. What are people going to think? Well, I don't care what people think. Oh, you don't, eh? Well, I do. And after all my plans, you go and make a laughing stock of yourself. Well, I don't believe in class distinction. Oh, so a college education has given you a viewpoint on life, huh? You're going to champion the downtrodden. You're the great emancipator. Well, I didn't send you to school for that. I sent you to school to study law, to go to the county seat and represent the people of your community. You've got me wrong, Dad. I, I have no idea of becoming a politician. You're going to be what I want you to be. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't put in four years of hard study to get into politics. It's a lawyer's duty to defend the innocent and prosecute the guilty, and that's what I'm going to do. Good night. For an hour with me. We don't care if they think we're very funny things, you know. 
The only thing that matters is what you know, what's in your mind. You've got a perfectly beautiful mind. And you have culture and understanding and knowledge. That's all that counts, Dolly. Oh, I must get off these things. My toes feel like squealing pigs. <laughs> you know, there must be more than that. Because I know things. I've studied. And still they laughed at me. <laughs> they weren't laughing at you, Laurie. Oh, yes, they were. I, I must have looked like a scarecrow. I was fell down and I was, was clumsy and awkward. I guess I am just a swamp. <laughs> I've fallen on dance floors countless times. <laughs> One time I upset my partner and seven others all over the floor. <laughs> um, oh, I think you're a precious little soul, Laurie. Uh, then I don't care. That's the spirit. <laughs> Let's take this off and stay a while. <laughs> Say, isn't that a beauty? Yes, aren't they nice? Taking me years to collect them. They don't have to worry about dresses. Are you still bothering about those stupid people? Or are you thinking about Wayne? Oh. <laughs> he likes you, Laurie. What? Didn't you see him upset that young fellow? No. One good blow in the jaw. Mm -hmm. Oh, he probably did it because they laughed at him. No, he did it because of you. Sorry, I've got the most magnificent idea. Excuse me just a minute. Look, darling. Oh, you like it? It's one I had when I was your age. But it was too small for me, and I think it'll just fit you. Jump up. You hold it there. Oh, it's precious on you, dear. Now, I'll shorten it, you see. Oh, 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 oh. Time to send. Yeah, you, uh, you look tired, Nora. I am working all the time. Yeah, that's it. That's a pity. Pity? Since when did you start getting sorry for folks? <laughs> you sit down there, right? I got something to want to talk about. Mortgage ain't got a cent, Jed. Tell you about the mortgage, something else. You notice I got the place all fixed up? Yes, I can see a change. No, lately. Yeah. Mean you're going to make it for folks? For me? Yeah. I want to try to learn to be kinder. I'm a rich man, got nobody to spend it on. I get kind of lonesome sometimes. What you driving at? Well, Nora, what did you say if I was to marry? Might make a difference, but I doubt it. Who are you thinking of? Lori. Lori? Jed Carson, you're crazy. Lori's no more than a child. A dang good offer. I'll give you back the mortgage and some money to boot. Better think it over, because where are you going to be in the next few years? You'll wind up in the house, that's where. I ain't scared of that. The poor house, Lori. Well, you're going to talk to her? Do you want me to do it? I'll do it. Ever again disturb the beauty in your heart. Angry? No. 
I just didn't think it would happen here in the swamp. Swamp? Why, this is the enchanted glade. It's all right. All right. It's another world where dreams come true. Do you believe that, too? going with you sometime. Why, Aunt Nora. Why, you'd love it. It's all just like another world where your dreams come true. Time I rested and dreamed and eased my tired body at last. A lot of things we'll be doing soon. Why, Aunt Nora. What's happened? You're so different. <laughs> You're almost as happy as I am. We won't have to be worrying about the mortgage anymore. Laurie, think of that. Why, I don't understand. Tell me quickly. Jed Carson's willing to marry you. What's the matter with that? Oh, Jed ain't bad. He's the richest man the Limber lost. No. Marry him. I won't. I won't. And I wouldn't marry him if he were the last man in this world. You do what I say. No. He'll give you a good home. Mind all the books and pretty things you've been wanting. He'll give us a deed to the land and money so as we won't have to work so hard. Oh, I Miss Mason, you gotta do something. Don't make such a fuss. And you're not going to marry him. I'll get Paul. He'll know what to do. Well, howdy, boys. How's the game going? Huh? Uh-oh, he's got you beat again. <laughs> Shh. He's in there. Oh. Hello, Nate. Fine day. Hey, you ain't sick, are you? Sick? I never felt better in my life. Here's an order for you. Look it over. Yeah, it's a pretty big order, Jim. Yes, sir. I'm gonna need it. Having a party? Party? Yes, sir. -y. Yeah, you ain't thinking on getting married again, are you? Now, do you know any reason why I shouldn't? Well, no. I remember your last wedding. <laughs> oh, Jed, fess up, will you? Oh, well, you'll all know soon enough. You'll all be invited. Now, get that out for me right away, will you, Nate? I'll bet it's a wedding. Oh, who would marry him? What do you think, Nate? I ain't saying. Pa! Pa! Jed Corson's going to marry Laurie. What? Mr. Nate, Mr. Nate, you won't let him do it, will you? No, no. Mr. Nate, you won't let him do it. Sit down there. No, 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 no. He won't. I'll fix him. I know what I'll do. I'll kill him. 
That's what I'll do. I'll kill him. You mustn't talk like that. What are you going to do for? You can't let this happen. Oh, think of something. Now, Sarah, don't take on so. There's no sense in getting Laurie any more upset than she is. Chris, you go and hitch up the team. Yes, sir. Now, look. Now, Sarah, get the lunch ready, and as soon as, as soon as he gets hitched up, we'll be on our way. Oh. You what? I'd like to see you try it. Get on home, you. Please, Adora. Shut up! Get going! I won't do it, I tell you. I'll run away from you. You're not going to let this child marry Jed Carson, and why not? I aim to do what's best for Laurie. Jed's the richest man in these here parts, and he'll be a good husband to her. Nora, your own flesh and blood. Mind your business. Nora, I ain't gonna let you do it. Caution's a drunken brute, and you know it. I'm Laurie's guardian. You try to stop me, and I'll have the law on you. I mean it. Sarah, you follow him. See if you can find out what it's all about. I'm going to talk to Corson. No, Pa. Now I know what I'm doing. Now I know what I'm doing. The team's hitched, Mr. Nathan. All right, Chris, you tend the store until I get back. Yes, sir. Now it's one more. Now I'll tell you. I don't want to know. I don't want to hear anything. She was like you. She wanted to marry out of the swamp. Well, she did. And after he was born, he ran off and left her without a dollar to her name. His folks is rich. She couldn't do nothing. There weren't no wedding license. Oh, no. It's the truth I'm telling you, Laurie. She come back to the swamp with you in her arms. And afterwards, she threw herself in and drowned him. In that place, you love so well to hide your birds and butterflies. I don't believe you. Folks around here thought it was an accident. What'd they say if they found out she'd done it a purpose? And why? No, you're lying. It's a bag of lies, and you know it. Oh, come back here, Lloyd. You're gonna do what I say. You're gonna marry Jed Carson? Or I'm gonna tell him about your ma. Then what will your fine friends in Plainville think? You better make up your mind to marry a man of your own kind. What are you going to do, Laurie? You don't want me to tell about your mom, do you? No. Do you? No. I will. All right, I will. I'll marry you. You can't come in here. Jed, I want a word with you. Don't tell me you're bringing that order already. No, I'm bringing you warning. Warning? You get it out of your head that you're a marrying Laurie, or something's going to happen to you. Where did you hear that, Nate? I didn't hear it. It's coming from me. You must have said something to make her change. I can't believe she did it herself. You didn't believe she'd get smart, did you? Well, another caller. My, ain't we getting popular now? Ain't welcome. Get out. I'll get out when I find out what devilment's behind all this. Get out now. There's no use, Pa. Laurie's willing. Ha! You hear that? She's willing. 
Now go back and sell your potatoes. Who said so? Lori did. Of course she did. She came to her senses. No sane girl's gonna miss a chance like this. Lori. Lori. Let her alone. Come down. You old meddler. Uncle Nick. Look at me. What's the matter, Uncle Nate? Did you say you was willing? Of course I did. I could see how good it would be for me. An ugly, despised swamp girl. Marrying the richest man in the Limberlot. You ain't telling the truth. It is the truth. I can have everything I want. All the books and beautiful dresses. Everything in the world. You didn't think I'd miss a chance like that, did you? Look at me. You're lying. I'm not. I'm not, I tell you. Can't you leave me alone? Can't you see I'm only trying to do what I want to do? I hope you're satisfied. Now go on about your business. Both of you. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. You ain't fooling me for a minute. I don't know what you said, but it must have been something rotten. Nora, if you was a man, I'd break every bone in your body. Come on, Sarah. Mrs. Nagel, come in, come in, look here. You go right on in the front room, you'll find plenty of refreshments in there. Now, boys, out through the kitchen, down the back, you know what you'll find. Something stronger than lemonade. <laughs> oh, Jonas. <laughs> How's the checker game, eh? Here's your old pal here, right through that way, you know, down by the barn, eh? Hello, Mrs. Smith. Right in the front room there. That's your way, you know what you'll find out there. Bears. Can't seem to realize that. How could this happen to our little girl? Lori, it isn't too late. It was good of Jed to buy you such a fine dress. Nathan's downstairs. If you'll only tell us why you're doing this, I know he can do something to stop it. Well, what's everybody so quiet about? Come on now, folks. Liven up a little bit. Come on down around the punch bowl. Have a drink. It's all on me. Here, Libby. I bet you ain't had a drink yet. Here you are. That's good for what ails you. Now sit down there and play me a nice tune, will you? Come on, come on. That's a good girl, Libby. Here, here. You can't push that cake down with a dry whistle. Here. There we are. Yeah. Well, Nate, what you looking so glum about? What you need is a good drink of hard liquor out there with the boys. I ain't thirsty. Well, Nate, this, this is an occasion for celebration, ain't it? Is it? Well, I'm getting married, ain't I? I don't know whether you are or not. Huh? Eh? <laughs> Nothing can stop it now, Nate. Nothing. <laughs> Come on, folks. Cheer up. Have a good time. This is a wedding. I'm getting married. Jed Corson's getting married. Come on, Libby. Play something lively. Something lively. I'll be right back, folks. 
Ain't it beautiful? It must have cost a plenty. Who is it? Janet. It's bad luck to see the bride. Yeah. I know. She's about ready, ain't she? Yes. Fine. I'll tell the folks. Nora, you're the only mother she's ever known. You carried her in your arms when she was a baby. Now you're putting her... Never. All your life, it'll gnaw at your conscience. You worry about your own conscience. Be sure you're turned to the right page, Parson. <laughs> I'll go down and get the boys. Are you sure you don't want one, Sheriff? No, not for me. <laughs> Chris, where are you going with that gun? Can I tell something? Going by the barn. Hey, Abner, I'm a pretty good shot myself. Yeah? Yeah, I just killed a quarry. <laughs> <laughs> You forgot your bouquet. Please, don't go near me. I never hated anyone before. I never wanted to. But I hate you. And I'll hate you till I die. What are you doing to that gun, Chris? You ain't gonna marry her. I'm gonna adopt her, Chris. She, she's gonna be your sister. I'm gonna take care of you. Now I'm gonna beat you within an inch of your life. That's what you're going to do with a gun. Uh -oh. Chris just killed Jim. Come in. Why, Lori, how nice to see you, dear. Oh, isn't the little dress becoming? Oh, yes, I love it. Uh, you said you'd like to buy my butterflies. Yes, I, I did, Lori. Well, I brought them. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Why, they're so nicely mounted. Why, but Lori. This is your whole collection. Yes, I know. I, uh, I have to have some money. Well, how much do you need? Would $20 be too much? Oh. $20 for these? Why, they're worth very much more. Let me see. 
fee now. I have 50 here. I'll give you the rest another time. Will that help you? Oh, yes. I thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome, dear. And won't you stay and have a cup of tea? I I'd love to, but I have to go. Goodbye. Goodbye, dear. Good morning. Good morning. Did you... Oh, sit down. Did you hear about Chris? Yes, I've read the paper. Well, will you be his lawyer? I have the money. Why were you marrying this man, Corson? Well, he was rich and we were poor and we... I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, who was we? I didn't mean we, just me. Did someone influence you? No. Um, I can't say. I've got to know. If I'm going to take the case, I've got to know everything. Please don't ask me about it, because I can't talk about it. Did you love him? No. Did it mean anything to you the other day when I kissed you? Do you like me? Yes. Well, I'll do for the present. I'll take the case. Oh, thank you. Here. Oh, no, you keep that. Oh. No, don't go. We've got a lot of work to do. Got to get the facts. I'll have to see you often. Will you be back? Well, yes, I'll be back, but I have to tell Chris about it. Just have a few minutes, miss. Chris. Laurie. Oh, Chris. You didn't kill Jed Corson, did you? No, I didn't. Hasta didn't. And the girl was gone. Oh, Chris, don't say any more. You mustn't talk until you see your lawyer. Lawyer? I ain't got no lawyer. Yes. Wayne Sellers is going to be your lawyer. It won't do no good. Yes, it will now, Chris. I know it will. Besides, I'm going to pray for you. Time's up, miss. Look, Chris. I can send you candy and everything you like. Goodbye. Will you come again? Yes. I'll be here every day. Remember. Criminal law, eh? Hoping to get yourself a murder case? I've got one. Huh? I'm on the Corson case. You're what? I'm going to defend the boy. You're going to do nothing of the kind? Oh, yes, I am. I believe he's innocent. Oh, no, innocence. Nonsense. I know that case. He threatened a man several times, and he was found standing over his body with a gun. Now, what more do you want? I know. He's trying to stop a drunken brute from marrying a girl who was young enough to be his daughter. Oh, I see. So it's the girl you're interested in. Did she hire you to defend this boy? Oh, that's beside the point. I'm interested in the boy as a human being. I want to see that he gets justice. I'll take care of that. I know these swappers better than you do. I've had plenty of experience with them. They're a bad lot. Just common, no good, illiterate trash. All of them. I don't want to go through that with you again. Well, neither do I want to go through it. And I won't. 
I've given you my opinion once, and I expect that to end the matter. And I've taken an oath to protect the innocent, and I'm going through with it whether I have to defend an aristocrat or trash. If you go against me in this, if you persist in your faith in that boy and girl and these worthless people, you can get out. Now give me your word that you won't take this case or pack your bags. Oh, Mrs. Parker, did you hear that? I couldn't help it here. Oh, what a fine boy. Fine? When he defies me, after all I've done for him, after all the plans his mother made for him? If his mother were here, she'd be proud of him, too. Proud of him? Why? Because he's mixed up with a lot of swampers? Sit down. You happen to remember your first case? You remember the responsibility you felt for your client? Well, your son feels the same way. And instead of helping him, you're condemning him. But you don't understand, Mrs. Parker. If Wayne takes this case, I won't be allowed to sit on the bench. Oh, so that's it. So for purely selfish reasons, you'll rob your son of his great opportunity and prevent his defending this poor boy. Oh, fiddlesticks. He doesn't care anything about the boy. He's taken that case because he's interested in that girl. And who is she? A common, ordinary... That's thing. enough. You don't know anything about this girl, but I do. And you're acting like a narrow-minded, bigoted old fossil. And you aren't fit to be a judge. But They're no good. There's your precedent. State versus Williams. Be up on that. Call on you, see if you can't say something to help Chris. Appears to me like young Sellers ain't doing very much for him. Yeah. Why didn't you put in a good word for him when you're up there? Hmm. You act like you're scared to death. I was. When they get you on that witness stand, you find out how thin your blood is. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone stand up. Hey. Uh, uh. Be seated. The case of State versus Christopher Cast will now resume. Miss Lori Mears, take the stand, please. How long have you known the defendant? About two years. You think uh, a lot of him, don't you? Yes. And he thinks a lot of you, doesn't he? I think so. You and he were together uh, quite often, weren't you? Yes. All alone? Yes. And uh, you talked to him about Jed Corson? Not always. But usually? Yes. He told you that he hated Jed Corson? Sometimes. Several times? Yes. And he said that he was going to kill Jed Corson. Answer that question. You heard him threaten to kill Jed Corson, didn't you? Yes. Why doesn't the young fool object? He's putting answers into the mouth of the witness. Be patient. Where was this? Well, once after he'd been beaten for cutting his hand. Beaten because Mr. Corson said he did it on purpose to get out of work. I move that let it remain. Go on with your questions. When was the last time you heard him threaten to kill his master? At Mr. Nathan's. Was that the occasion referred to by Mr. and Mrs. Nathan? Yes, sir. And did he say that he would kill Mr. Corson in order to prevent his marriage to you? 
Yes. And did you suggest that he should wait until after your marriage to the rich Mr. Corson? Don't answer. He hasn't sense enough to see that the judge is with him. Reframe that question. Was there anything said at the time about waiting until after your marriage? No. And did you plan such a crime? Oh, no. There was no understanding between you? Eight. She has already answered no. I must warn you against any further attempt to confuse this witness. Mr. Sellers. Have you made any preparation for your case? Yes, Your Honor. Pa, why don't he do something? I don't think he knows very much. What was the defendant's objections to your marrying Mr. Corson? Well, he hated him. And he was afraid he'd beat me, too. And did you have the same hatred and fear of him? Yes, I was afraid. Then why did you want to marry him? Well, I could see that I could get away from poverty and have things. Oh, so you were marrying him for money and you saw your opportunity for escape through this boy. Well, that's not so. Your witness. Miss Mayer. If you'll answer my questions simply and calmly, I won't keep you long. I know you must be tired after the unwarranted and disgusting grilling to which you have been subjected. Your Honor, I take exception to counsel's inference. Go it, boy, go it. To which you have been subjected by this shyster. Is that plain to you? Why, you young... I find you both for contempt of court. I apologize, Rob. I apologize. If you had any objections to action of counsel, you had plenty of opportunity to enter. We'll see with witness. What was your interest in Chris? Well, you see, I wanted to help him. I wanted to teach him to read and write because I think books make ugly things seem more beautiful. Did you hate the deceased, Corson? I never let myself hate anyone. You see, well, it's not good to hate. In a whole world, isn't there someone that you have hated? Oh, I can't say. You testified that if you married, you could escape poverty. Who told you that? Oh, please, that's not fair. Well, is the one who influenced you the one that you hate? I don't know. Was it Corson who promised you relief from poverty? Well, not to me. To whom? To me. I made her do it. I lied about her more and Paul. I told her her. Her more drowned herself. All lies. It's me, she hates me. I'm the one that's a criminal. Not that poor boy who had the courage to try and save her. She hates me. I've lost her. And I never knew till now. She's all I ever had. All I ever loved. Nora! Sit down, lady. Sit down. You must be quiet. Quiet in court here. Order! Any more demonstrations and I shall have to clear the court. That's all. Your Honor will please inform the jury to disregard the play acting that has been perpetrated here. The jury will disregard it. <clears throat> Any more witnesses? No, Your Honor. You may call your witnesses. Christopher Cass, will you take the stand? Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. 
State your right name. Christopher Cass. Be seated. Night of July 10th. Were you at uh, Jed Carson's place? Yes, sir. Did you go to the barn? Yes, sir. What happened there? I called to Mr. Corson and told him that... Give the exact words. I called to him and said, Mr. Corson, one of your horses is sick. He came to me. I pointed the gun at him. And said, You ain't gonna marry her. Was the gun cocked? Yes, sir. Was your finger on the trigger? Yes, sir. Well, what else was said? He said, it's all a joke. I'm gonna have top glory. You're gonna answer. And then what happened? He grabbed the gun away from me. He said, I'm gonna beat you within an inch of your life. And then he jammed the butt of the gun down against the grindstone. It exploded, it killed him. That's all. When your finger was on the trigger of that gun, would you swear that you didn't press it? Yes, sir. And when the gun was seized from you, would you say that your finger didn't press the trigger? Yes, sir. You say that after Mr. Corson was in possession of that gun, he told you he was going to beat you? Yes, sir. If he said that, didn't he see the gun? No, sir. Are you sure of that? Yes, sir. You didn't see the hammer that gun strike the grindstone? No, sir, but it must have. And you don't know how that gun was discharged, do you? No, sir. But it could have been discharged when he pulled the gun away from you. Yes, sir. That's all. May I have this? With your honest permission, I'll ask the defendant to reenact what actually happened. I show this gun. You recognize it? Yes, that's the gun I have. Which hammer was cocked? That one. And this is the trigger that explodes the shell in that barrel? Yes, sir. And this is the trigger that your finger was on? Yes, sir. Stand up. Take the gun, point it at me exactly as you did a dead course. Is that the way it was? Yes, sir. Open it up. Now pull the trigger. But Mr. Sellers, you got a loaded shell in there. Pull the trigger. No, sir. Pull it. That's all. Any questions? No questions. Witness excused. Abner Bates, will you take the stand? <clears throat> do you recognize this gun? Yes, do. How long has it been in your possession? Well, ever since I took it away from the boy at the scene of the shooting. Did you make any alterations in the mechanism of the gun? No, I didn't. Has anyone tampered with it? Well, I should say not. That's all. Questions? No questions. Witness excused. <clears throat> Gentlemen, upon examining this gun when it was first introduced as evidence, I made a discovery which my learned opponent had overlooked. This gun could not have been discharged by use of the trigger, of either trigger. There are no springs in the gun. Therefore, it must have been discharged exactly as my client has testified. You see the gun, please. Defense rests. In sight of the evidence already presented, I feel that further instruction by me is unnecessary. The jury will therefore retire and decide their verdict. We find the defendant not guilty. You're going to live with us, and I'm going to send you to school. Well, what do you think? <laughs> what 
Suppose everything you said the truth. You mean about your ma? Yes. No, I mean about loving me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> 